watching KCMI TV. Well, thank you for joining me today. And uh, I wanted to talk to you about memorial prayers um, because I know in my own life, and I'm sure many of you, you might still be praying for things that you've prayed for a long time. And so hopefully what I feel like God's put in my heart will help you uh, in your pursuit of God answering long-term prayers. So I want to take our text uh, out of the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. And he says, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. And so when you read this verse, Paul really gives us, he says there are four different ways that we approach God in prayer. And so before I really get to memorial prayers, I just wanted to talk a little bit about some of these others. And uh, Paul says here that supplication. Uh, and so there are ways that we pray and, and, and supplication is one of them. And uh, I think when we pray in supplication, it is, it's more intense. It is, it's emotional, you can feel it. I mean, there's just something going on there. And um, the word supplication just really means to seek God with intensity. And uh, I wanted to go over to the book of Acts because I give you a, uh, verse here in chapter 10, uh, verse 1, it says, There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, one that feared God with all of his house, which gave much alms to the people, and he prayed to God always. And this word here, prayed, literally means to make supplication or to ask or to long for. And Cornelius, he had seen the Spirit of God poured out on the Jews, and he knew it was something that was so glorious. And so the Bible says he made supplication to the Lord for that, that God would come and answer. And the Lord shows up with an angel and says, Cornelius, he, he said, your prayers have been heard. And so there are times that we come to the Lord in supplication because we're asking God to release something uh, in our lives. The second part of this that Paul talks about, he says, intercession. And uh, I, I don't think that intercession is, is a particular calling. You know, I've had people tell me, well, I'm called to be an intercessor. I think that every believer, every believer has the ability to be an intercessor in God. And uh, I'll give you the definition of intercession, I think. I think it's a particular prayer for a particular thing for a particular time. And it it really deals more with something that's, that's going on in our lives that God needs to deal with immediately. And I mean, when, uh, when you get an intercession, it's different than other kind of prayers. I, I've had intercession hit me before. Uh, maybe uh, it was for somebody else, but you could feel it in your spirit. And, you know, I remember going back to the Old Testament, um, Hannah wanted a child, and the Bible says she would go up year by year to Shiloh with her husband to make, um, you know, Elkanah to make sacrifice. But eventually that hunger in her for that child put on her a spirit of intercession. And when she got in the temple there, and Eli's off to the side watching, the, the spirit of intercession hit her, and the Bible said it was so strong, so intense, that her lips moved, but there was no sound coming out. And uh, in fact, Eli thought she was drunk, but the spirit of intercession came on her. And uh, boy, when intercession hits you, it is about touching God for that moment. And sometimes intercession can keep somebody from dying. I remember years ago reading the story of, 
an individual who all of a sudden God put on them a spirit of intercession for a missionary in another country. And uh, some time later, they were able to talk to that missionary. And it, they, they said, God, on that particular time, moved on me. I was in such intense prayer for you. And they said, well, this is what happened. And they were in a very dire situation. So intercession will step in when the enemies come in like a flood, not just for your life, but God might put it on you for your children, might put it on for the nation, might put it on for, for your church or something in your life. But when intercession hits you, it's different than supplication. There is such an intensity and such a spirit that gets on you that God begins to lose something in the spirit. And so, uh, the third thing I want to talk about that Paul mentions here, he says, uh, the prayer of thanksgiving. And uh, I think that all of us really need to practice this because, you know, there's a lot of times that we get overwhelmed with, with life. Uh, we see other people blessed and... and uh, we start thinking, you know, I wish I had this and I wish I had that. And if you're not careful when you get in that mindset, uh, the enemy can just wreak havoc with where you are in God. And so Paul said there needs to be times that when we pray, there's just thanksgiving, that you're not coming uh, in petition. And uh, I was praying yesterday and I thought about this. I told the Lord, I said, I'm not serving you because of your blessings. But I also know this, that I'm blessed because I serve you. And uh, Thanksgiving, sometimes, you know, you can go to prayer and it just seems like you're hitting a brick wall. You had those times where you just can't seem to break through. And I've learned that when I'm hitting something resistance and I can't seem to feel like I'm touching God, that I'll just begin to thank, thank God. The spirit of thanksgiving will begin to come up out of me and I begin to thank the Lord for just so many things. And I got, I'll tell you, I'm thankful that my children are saved and I thank you for a good marriage. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you live inside of me. I'm thankful that that I don't have cancer. I'm thankful, Lord, that that you've blessed me in my life, that that we can have a home and electricity and, you know, things that we just take for granted. But you know what happens when you begin to pray with thanksgiving? It turns into gratefulness. And when you get grateful for the things of the Lord, the first thing it does, it kills doubt. Boy, I'm telling you, when you begin to, to have the prayer of thanksgiving, it will kill the spirit of unbelief that, that tries to come in. The other thing it does, it makes you forget bad things. Sometimes we're so caught up with wanting things that we don't have that we forget how blessed we are with the things that we do. So Paul talks about this. He said the prayer of thanksgiving. And so the, the last thing that I want to talk about, and, and this is really the, the, the core of our podcast today, is Paul talks about here, he said prayer. Um, and um, I think there's two kinds of prayer. I think there are, there are current prayers and there are memorial prayers. And you say, well, Pastor, what do you mean by a current prayer? Um, a current prayer is something that, that's paid in full. When you, you get your electric bill every month, you pay it in full. It's not in installments. And so because it's a, something that's already paid for when you flip the switch, that light comes on. And uh, current prayers can, I think it's in James, uh, the fifth chapter, he said, is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders 
and they shall lay hands on them and they shall recover. It's, it's not a prayer that you have to keep praying. And it's a current prayer because healing's already been paid for. Jesus, by his stripes, we already have been healed. So when you pray for healing, you're praying a current prayer. There's no more installments that need to be made. You're just through, by faith, you're declaring it, and God just comes in like a flood, and boom, he just heals you. And, you know, we're just, uh, you just see God do immediate things. That's a current prayer. But then there are memorial prayers, and boy, these, these are different. Memorial prayers, um, if you, unless you really have the strength, you begin to lose hope. And uh, a memorial prayer is, um, it's not paid all at once. It's paid over time. Uh, and, and James, uh, I think it's the same chapter. He said, is there any among you who is afflicted? Let him pray. And the word afflicted means uh, to suffer, to endure uh, hardships and troubles. And so he said, when you're enduring hardships and, and trials and you're suffering, he said, let him pray. But this is a prayer, a memorial prayer. It, And we all know this. Boy, I've, I've had things that I've prayed about and um, next week hasn't been answered. Next year, it hasn't been answered. Two years down the road, you're still praying it and it has not been answered. But it's a memorial prayer. And what you are doing is, well, I just feel the presence of God I'm talking about this. But see, you pray in faith. Once you begin to ask God for something, doesn't matter how long it takes, you never stop believing and you never stop declaring. So you come into prayer and you begin to say, God, I'm asking you to make this happen. I'm declaring it. I'm binding you to your word. And yet time goes by and it still has not happened. But what you're doing is it's like, it's like building a, a memorial. You've seen places where there's a memorial to something and it can be a statue or it can be, you know, some kind of edifice that's been raised up. And I think for us, uh, the Lord loves altars. And uh, so many times Elijah and uh, different Abraham, they would build an altar to the Lord. and they would take one stone and put it on another and another stone on another until it had reached the peak and became what they wanted. Memorial prayers are where you pray and you may not get the answer that day, but what you don't realize, you put another stone on it. And eventually, that is gonna be complete. And then God, will show up and uh, God told Abraham, he said, in thee shall all nations be blessed. And he told Abraham, he said, out of your loins is gonna come a seed that'll become a nation. And out of thy seed, all nations shall be blessed. And the Lord told that to Abraham when he was 75 years old. So now Abraham thinks, well, God's made the promise so Sarah and I, we're going to have a baby next year. But, you know, five years down the road still hadn't happened. Eight years down the road hadn't happened. Ten years down the road still hasn't happened. He's 85 now. And, you know, Abraham had to be human like us. And I'm sure his natural mind, the enemy would tell him, oh, God ain't going to do that. But Romans chapter 4, I think it's verse 17 through 21, it talks about this particular time. And it said, Abraham staggered not at the promises of God, but he believed that God could quicken things that are dead and speak things that are not as though they were. And so I have to believe that because Abraham was the father of faith, didn't matter 10 years later. 
He was still thanking God. He was still making a prayer, memorial prayer that, that Lord, you're gonna give me a son. I think he made preparation for it. It took 25 years, actually 24 years. He's 99 when the angel comes back and says, now you're gonna have a son. And when he's 100 is when that boy shows up. I, I truly believe this, that we are in a season in the spirit realm where God is answering memorial prayers. You say, well, Pastor, you know, it, it's difficult. I know it is. I, you know, I, I was thinking about uh, Joshua, my son, who passed away a few months ago. Um, and, you know, you've heard his testimony, but he fell into the gay lifestyle when he was a young man. And I interceded before the Lord for 14 years, I declared that my son would be set free. And you know what, one, one day, I wasn't even praying for him, one day, the Holy Spirit just showed up in his house and said, because of the prayers that have gone over you, I'm setting you free. That moment, I don't know which prayer it was I prayed, but I can tell you this, that prayer reached into heaven. Some of you have prayed so many prayers, you don't realize how close you are, hallelujah, to that next prayer, ascending to the heights that it enters into the throne room of God. And then all of a sudden, that memorial prayer is answered um, I wanted to just read another verse here. Um, this is out of the book of Luke, the first chapter, and um, verse 13. This is where the Lord is speaking to Zechariah. And he said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And verse 18, Zacharias said, but I'm an old man and I, I'm stricken in years. There's no telling how many years that Zacharias and Elizabeth prayed for a son until one day when it, the Kairos moment of God came into effect. And there had to be a baby born that at the right age would be ready to be a forerunner of Christ. And his prayer couldn't be answered until Jesus was getting ready to be born. Some of you don't realize it, but the prayers that you have been praying have not been about then, but they're about now. They're about the entrance of this divine visitation of the Lord coming on the earth. And memorial prayers are probably take the most strength, the most faith. We don't, they take the longest. But I can tell you this, when memorial prayers are answered, my God, all kinds of things happen. And uh, I, I want to encourage you, uh, you know, I love this verse. It says in Psalm 65, it says, Blessed is the man whom God, or whom thou choosest, and causest to approach unto you. It is a blessing to be able to pray memorial prayers. And um, in Hebrews it says, But you have need of patience. After that, you have done the will of God. You've made that memorial prayer that you might receive the promise. I will leave you with these four verses. Be not weary, hallelujah, in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Don't let memorial prayers take your strength, but let them make you strong. Luke 18, it says, Will not God avenge his own elect, though he tarrieth long? 
Yet when he comes, he will come speedily. He that goeth forth weeping, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again, rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. The devil cannot steal prayers that are prayed in faith. And I look back over my life and I can see prayers that I prayed 15, 20, 25 years, and then I saw God answer them. I want to encourage you, keep on praying, do it in faith, don't be moved by time, don't be moved by delay, but you be moved by what God's word says. God bless you, hope this has helped you. I'll see you again next week. For more information about Kent Christmas Ministries International or Regeneration Nashville, go to kentchristmas.org or regenerationnashville.org. And for the latest updates or videos, follow us on Facebook and subscribe to us on YouTube. God bless you.